Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Rulo here and today I'm doing another Brick Mania kit unbox built live. I'm gonna build this live in a little bit in review of the Steiger 131 Tank Museum Heavy Tank. So this is based on the real tank that's located at the, I think, Bovington Tank Museum. So this is the box, all sealed. The box actually is a little bit different than the usual Brickmania boxes. So I think this is how they updated it. And there's nothing on the side that it used to be. I think all the stats that now they put in the in the back. It actually shows you the lineup of pretty awesome Brickmania minifigures right here. So this is skill level four, 918 Lego pieces, brick arms, and other elements. All right, let's go ahead and without further ado, pop this open, get the plastic off. And I think it's designed by Dan Siskit. He has previously designed another Tiger 131 kit, but this is the updated version because it has a few extra, <laughs> we'll get to that later, 3D printed elements on this one. All right, so I finally got the sleeve off and oh God, Brookmania. Do a tutorial, how to open your boxes, please. Because that was a pain in the butt, just so you know. All right, let's go ahead and pop it open, see what's inside. I mean, the box itself outside the sleeve is the same. The manual looks a little different now for those new kits. All right. We're going to look into that. There should be no stickers on this, all the printed parts. And this is pretty awesome, actually. We have printed wheels. We have 131 tile. Some other items printed, which is pretty cool. And let's see what the minifix I had. And here's all the minifix with the custom 3D printed parts as well. We're gonna have a closer look at those once it's all built. Lego track links and all the other parts to build this pretty cool Tiger 131 kit. All right, so I finished building live this newest version of Brick Mania kit, Tiger 131, heavy German tank. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a 360 just to kind of show you around how it looks from all the sides. All right, let's go ahead, actually open all the hatches and show you how that looks like with all the hatches open. All right, so we have all the hatches open. We have two hatches on the hole in the front, right over here, and two hatches on the top, on top of the turret, right here. And the good thing about, or I guess improved thing about this version of Tiger 131 is that when you have hatches open on the hole, you actually can move the turret in the barrel with no issues. Of course, on this side, you do have a little bit of this antenna being stuck in the back right here. But I do like that the gun is not obstructed anymore or barrel is no longer obstructed here by the hatch. Now the gun, go ahead and give a little bit of zoom, can actually decline and incline and it works fine. Right, let's go ahead and close the hatches. Let's kind of go through the rest of the model. So this is done pretty easily. As you can see here at the bottom, this is all Lego track or track links. And it rolls very nicely. And this is a smooth service right here. We have an upside down Lego base plate and it rolls really well. Definitely a big props to the designer of this kit. And we flip the tank upside down. We can see a little bit of a suspension work. So we do have here simulated suspension that kind of goes up and down. Rubbery Lego pieces that do have this simulation of the suspension as well. And kind of have that little bit of a resistance. Just kind of want to show you here as well. So very nicely done with the suspension work. Let's go ahead and talk about the prints. Maybe give a little bit of a zoom. So what we have here, we're gonna lift the tank as well. We have prints here in the front, those front fender prints, and those are printed on multiple pieces, so two pieces, I guess. We have this one tile print right here. We have 131 print right here. Bulk and Kreutz is printed. And good to mention, there's no stickers at all on this kit. So everything I'm gonna point out right now is gonna be prints. Here we have another cross element print, tile print in the back. This is very nice. We have a little bit of a 
storage compartment or baggie here. We have exhaust pipes. Even here, this is a nice print job as well. We have those vents on top. Maybe move this a little bit. Those are very nicely done. Definitely great detail. And same on this side, we have the numbers. Hatches, cross element hatches, bulk and croids. Even here, the small details on the side as well. And we'll look at the turret. And then we see prints on this both sides. All right. Not to forget, we have also, which I love, this is definitely a really great addition. We have all those discs right here, which represent the wheels. They are also printed in tan. Great job on that from Brickmania. And <laughs> let's go ahead and move on, I guess, to the elephant in the room. There was a bunch of discussions in the community about that. Some controversial, at least not to me, I don't have a problem with this. Whoop. But a little bit of a controversial in the Lego custom military community, those 3D printed elements. We have 3D printed muzzle brake in the barrel. And we have a dry wheel sprocket. That's also 3D printed. And 3D printed small grenades. Those are very small. So this 3D printed element right here actually has a little bit of this recoil effect. Go and show that so you can put it in a little further. And it's in this kind of firing position and it kind of shoots it out. And you have that elongated position. Basically, you can change this up. I don't think it's a big of a deal. I'm going to actually maybe take this off and show you how that looks like. So on this side, you do have like this Lego pin. And this is all 3D printed. And uh, here where it's connecting to the rest of the 3D printed element. Uh, and this is where you can, it's fairly actually flexible. So in some ways it's good. In other ways, if you kind of touch it a little bit, it can go inside and mess up the, the whole setup you have with the length of the, of the barrel. And then we have pretty typical now at this point, 3D printed muzzle brake, which is matching exactly the colors. Yeah, maybe just put a little bit of a statement from the Dan Siski himself, the designer of this kit. Check that out. As you mentioned, a lot of cross element printing. Uh, I don't necessarily like to do that. Did started it on the Warspite, did some like detail printing. Like I don't like to substitute printing for parts, but there's just sometimes you just sure. like, I you know, if I want to make something work and look cool, uh, we can print it, uh, which we've mm -hmm. done on this, this, we did on the war spike, we did a little bit on the SU-27 actually too. So okay. That's where it started, it's kind of a slippery slope, like, ooh, we can do all this new printing. <laughs> so, but I, 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 I'm kind of like, let's not go overboard because right. we, you know, it is still Lego and, and, and we want to use the brick to, to, to build it as much mm -hmm. as possible, whenever possible. Yeah, you don't want to use it to, as like a crutch or a compensation. Plus, you know, whenever you can capture something like that in bricks instead of printing, more figures, more things to right. put, you know what I mean? Less, less pressure on UV, which right. is always something we're trying to achieve. Oopsie, I showed the wrong Brickmania video. Hee <laughs> hee. We're, we're pushing an aesthetic that's like, you know, die, die cast quality, um, mm -hmm. you know, premium top shelf. We're talking like, you know, the sort of stuff that you, you would treasure, and that's what we want to make. Mm -hmm. You want to make this a super special kit. If you're going to go to the, you know, the, the tank museum and buy one of their tanks, you've got options. You, there are other companies, mm -hmm. other brands that, you know, uh, follow on Brands to Brick Mania that are more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, quite frankly, and we're fine with that. Right. That's not what we're aiming for. Um, we're aiming for... Uh, a good value, but also like, you know, you're getting a premium product. Mm -hmm. And part of that premium product is delivering some, you know, pushing the limit on what we can do. Absolutely. And like, well, why would we settle for the same thing we've been doing for the last 10 years? Because Lego hasn't given us any options that are better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we can incrementally improve the Tiger barrel only so much before like, hey, there's just nothing in Lego that's gonna, gonna, gonna help. And, and we've been further. using our own muzzle brake on the Tiger for like, what, the last four or five years. Right. So, um, I mean, it's already, that, we've, that, that, that ship sailed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We've been, you know, adding, adding custom parts. So yeah, exactly. So from the video, you can see it's uh, clear as mud. <laughs> but yeah, not to get into the strap of discussing Lego purism versus the aesthetics and how it's supposed to look to the real thing. Just put that aside. There were some reasonable 
kind of suggestions from the community side, which I kind of agree with, and maybe I can mention here in the video as well, what mostly was suggested maybe instead of kind of going this route with all the 3D printed elements, which I personally don't mind at all. Um, maybe some people are not huge fans, then for them, for those people, the updated Tiger could have been done from with the Lego elements, and for example, those 3D printed elements could be sold separately at some kind of add-on pack, which I'll probably definitely get. And kind of the same thing goes for the wheels. I would love to have those printed Tiger wheels as well as an add-on, and I would probably use them to replace even some of my older Tiger tanks that I have. So yeah, this is definitely some good suggestions maybe, I don't know, recommend you can consider. But once again, I personally don't have any issues with 3D printed elements especially with this barrel because Brickman have done those barrels previously before. I mean, if you look at the Pershing, no one complained about that. And again, to me, I probably put aesthetics uh, before anything else. And to me, this looks very good. Well, let's go ahead and actually compare this new model with the older model of Brickmania Tiger. So I'm going to put this down and here we go. Here we have this older generation, if you want to call it this way. Brickmania Tiger, and this is the new one. So, and you kind of let me know, is there much of a difference? So here we do have this barrel, which has been brick built. And this is how the previous Tiger 131 was also built. And here we have this 3D version. Overall proportion seems to be almost the same. I do not see much of a huge differences. All right, so here we have once again two Brickmania Tigers, the older version on the left, the new one on the right, on the base plate. So you can check those out and compare. Once again, the new one has all the printed elements, the older one I have, it's all stickers. Let me know which one do you prefer. This kit also comes with the five custom tank minifigures. And they also have 3D printed and regular printed elements, all of them on top. So check them out. I do really like the 3D printed elements, definitely add to the realism. Cappies and the radio headsets. If I had to pick a couple of favorite things about them, I uh, really like the sweater on this guy. Really like the cappy with those 3D printed goggles on top. And for this fig, nice cappy. And also, if you can see, the head has all those like tan lines. I think that was a nice little attention to detail as those guys are based in Africa. So cool fix overall. All right, this is the backside of the mini fix. In case you're curious how they look like. All right, so this is how it looks like with all the minifix plays inside the tank. Again, this is a five-man crew. One is gonna be extra, and I have one right here for this hatch. All of them sit just fine, except for this one right here. And the reason for that is we have MG, which is the machine gun, and it kind of sticks out right here. And there's no way to place the minifix on top of the MG. The old Tiger didn't have that issue, or it wasn't that big of an issue. Again, no matter what you do here, this is gonna be on the way. So definitely want to kind of show that. And this is what I mean by being able to fit a minifig here with the old tiger in the hatch. You see, MG is still here, but then minifig is still somehow fits just fine. And while we're doing a little bit of a comparison here, let's go ahead and throw the Kobe tank, which is this is a 144 scale tiger made by Kobe in the mix as well. So we can see how this is scales. So this is 148 and this is 135th. And of course, this is 135th as well. So that's a little bit of a size comparison. All right, so a couple of words overall on the build. The build itself was really good. I really enjoyed putting this together. It was a lot of fun. It wasn't difficult at all. The manual was very self-explanatory. Maybe just gonna show you this really quickly. 
push this aside. Again, all the Brickmania manuals are on par with LEGO. All the steps are marked very clearly, very visibly. I do like the back of the manual as you do kind of get this little poster images. So you get how the tank's supposed to look like as a finally built with the minifix and you have this little bit poster. But many if you're listening, please add, add with your kids some poster. I would love to put them on the wall. So this will be a very nice addition. I can't take this out because again, this is part of the manual, but if there was a separate poster, I will love that Brookmania. Thank you. <laughs> but overall, the other positives that I really enjoyed about this pretty awesome build, pretty awesome tank. Again, the prints here and on the wheels definitely add so much more realism. I do enjoy that Brickmania put the effort into adding all those prints here. Now the minifigs are definitely an awesome addition. I personally really like them. And I like that it comes with a full crew of five. There's nothing that you need to buy separately here. And all the small details that have been added this time around, right here, and even the, the cables. That's a very nice addition. And I'm one of those people that are gonna say that I do, do really like the 3D printed elements. I like the aesthetics. Again, I don't care if you're gonna say it's Tamiya or whatever else looks like a model build. If you look at actual picture of a tiger and you look at this, then you're gonna say, yeah, this is exactly how a tiger is supposed to look like. And I appreciate that. So I don't mind 3D printed elements at all. I actually do like them a whole lot. Now, a little bit of a critique maybe of the 3D printed elements that I have, nothing to do with the element itself, but mostly just of the color. I don't think it's an exact match. If we look at uh, maybe the tile piece in here, I mean, I know they kind of try to match it, but I feel like this is a little bit darker, or maybe it has a little bit of a greener tint. It would be nicer if it actually did match. And my other smaller critique as well, not a big deal. If I remove this guy right here, remove the tanker, then we, we close this hatch, we do have a little bit of this gap. And I was kind of thinking how to fix it. If you do put a plate here, one by two, then the hatch will not close. So if there's a solution, maybe we can come up with, that'd be nice because I do, I don't really, and it's not, again, not a big deal. It's not very noticeable, but I do not like seeing that gap in a turret. Let me go ahead and place it actually in diorama. I've created a little bit of a mock. I don't know if you want to call it mock, but it's more like a mock display diorama. And while I'm going to put it there, I'm actually talking a little bit about history. Maybe get a little bit of that visualization of North Africa and how this Tiger 13 almost actually there. So I hope you're gonna enjoy the mug. I hope you enjoyed the review, but let's go ahead and hop into the short history or background of this specific Tiger 131. Tiger tanks start to arrive to Tunisia in November of 1942 as part of the German Panzer African Corps presence in North Africa. In African campaign, it was more of a morale booster uh, for the troops to see Tigers in the field. Tiger tank wasn't a huge game changer for like North Africa campaign for Germans, just because just the number wasn't there. There was not enough brought into the campaign. Uh, they're also vulnerable to enemy mines and the mountainous terrain in North of Tunisia wasn't kind of working out for them too well. Unlike for example, in the Eastern front when there's a lot of plains and steppe. Putting aside not being such a grand impact in the whole campaign, it was still very effective during any kind of engagements that were ongoing in those Panzer divisions. But at the time, the Panzer IV was also performing very well, or just as well as Tiger was, and it was also more reliable, and it was a lot more in, in numbers. There's estimated only around 30 Tigers that came to North Africa, and Tiger 131 is one of them and is one of the surviving tanks that you can actually see right now in person that is located at Bovington Tank Museum. And it's exactly what it says on a box of, of Brickmania kit. In this video, I didn't go too much in the technical aspects of the tank itself, like the specs and everything like that. If you want to know more about the actual Tiger, I mean the review on all the Brick, Brickmania kit on my channel. It's also available in the playlist. So go ahead, please check it out. And there's more additional information on the Tiger tank itself. Here again, it was more of a focus on the Tiger 131 and North Africa in general. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this diorama. I hope you overall liked this review. And please put thumbs up, subscribe, and come back for more. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.